of the great bicycle races throughout the world have mountains, and the Tour du Pont in the United States is no exception. Today, the riders go deep into Virginia, and the rolling roads begin to go with them. Now the riders must attack the race leader. Since the start of this race, Jelen Nydam, it could be his teammate, Raul Alcala from Mexico, or Akle Volsvold from Norway, three times second in three years. Malcolm Elliott from Great Britain, or the American favorite, Lance Armstrong, that they must attack. Sunny Virginia and the riders in the Tour du Pont, the 116 survivors, have now moved into their fourth state. It's day five. Hi, everybody. I'm Phil Liggett, and this morning we've moved down overnight to Front Royal. And the last time the riders in the Tour du Pont were here, it was 1989, when the race was called the Tour de Trump. The winner when we finished in Charlottesville was Eric van der Arden. Well, this year, Eric van der Arden is lying third overall. But I'll guarantee he won't be winning the stage today. The route today is from Front Royal down to Massanutten. We are entering the hills of Virginia for the first time in this race. And I'll guarantee the riders who see themselves as the pre-race favourites must now come out to play and prove their point. Brian Dreber is with one of those pre-race favourites, Lance Armstrong of the Motorola team. Brian. Lance Armstrong, among the other would-be winners of this race, has been pretty patient riding along in the back, and with the exception of the time trials when they had to get out front, uh, well, it's been a waiting game, but I would have to say, Lance, the waiting's probably over with the mountains looming ahead of us now. Well, I think so. Up until this point, uh, the would-be winners haven't had much of an opportunity. It's been rather flat and, and rather controlled by Word Perfect. I think a lot of the teams are intimidated by Word Perfect, and they are a good team, but, uh, you know, some things are going to happen today, and we just have to... Uh, we have to go and try to grab this race. After yesterday, we'd have to say, and, and did actually, that uh, Word Perfect might be a little bit weaker uh, after the effort that they made yesterday. Any more attacks going to come uh, against them or, or what? Well, I don't know uh, who's going to attack. I think that we're still going to play a little bit of a waiting game, but I wouldn't hold your breath on Word Perfect being too tired. They're, they're an awfully strong team, and, and they do this all year long on the front like that. So they're, they're used to it, and they're prepared for it. Well, I'm Paul Sherwin, down with the Word Perfect team, and this could be the crucial day for them because Yellow Nidem has had the yellow jersey since the start of this year's Tour de Pont, but the man they're all talking about at the moment is the Mexican from Word Perfect, that's Raul Alcala. For the first stage in the mountains and the crucial finish at the top of the Massanutten Resort, everybody will be looking at Raul. Raul, it's a very difficult day for you today. How do you feel about the job the team has done for you so far? Well, yesterday the team was working so hard and... Um how the stage is very difficult today because we finish in the top. Um, I hope it's came the team together till uh, most possible till the last climb, and we see what's happened. You know because uh, this, I think it's the second second climb is very steep. You've had a very relaxed start to the tour so far because Nidam's had the yellow jersey. Can you feel the pressure building up now because everybody expects you to take over the top spot? Well, when I come here, I feel the pressure already because. Uh, I know I come to win here. I come to, to make a good good results for myself, you know, and also for the team because the sponsor is a world perfect. It's an American company, and it has to riding well here, you know. And what a beautiful day it is to enjoy the first day in the mountains. Atle Volsvols looking for the win. Oh, I don't think it's going to be very difficult to take one minute and twenty of Alcala. So uh, the, for me, it's. I, w I want to try to win the stage and then we see what, if it's uh, if I can make some time or so I don't think so much of the GC so far. Got the cheetah spots. Yellow Nidam in the race leader jersey. Well, he'll be out of the limelight by his own admission. He's not going to hang on to it. And the sprinters, well, they've had their moment in the sun, but it won't be today either. Even Venstra holds a stranglehold on that. The reason why is because the mountains are with us for the first time. Three major climbs between Front Royal and the Massanutten Resort, including an uphill finish that's actually more like a roller coaster. The last little bit is uphill and along the way a few climbs, but there are some downhills to give them a bit of rest. And here's the way it looks. It starts off slowly enough and then uh, a couple of third and second category climbs on the way to the finish which itself is a third category climb in this race festive atmosphere on the starting line young cycling fans who have come out from school to see the start of the Tour du Pont so after four days of being pushed into the back seats by the sprinters the climbers of the Tour du Pont can now come to the front and show us what mountain goats they really are 
The riders roll out facing 100 miles, having driven here this morning, a drive of three hours to bring them to the start line. Except for Team Motorola, they opted to stay in a different hotel, even perhaps at their own expense. It was an hour and a half closer, a little less of a drive. Coming up, a day for the climbers. And welcome back to the Tour du Pont. The riders now in the hills of Virginia and they're holding themselves tightly packed together for this start, Brian. Well, they're not going to get into this one too quickly because they know the hills are there and for certain they have worked very hard the day before. Everyone said the race certainly began on the day previous and Word Perfect, led by Yellen Nidham himself, had the most work to do. They were nearly 75 miles on the front and, well, they're going to want to loosen up. Steven Rooks of Vestina in the race for the second time. A flat tire just a half hour after the start. That shouldn't be a problem for him as he gets right back on the road. Fairly routine for the mountain climber from Holland as he slips back into the race and rejoins as quickly as possible. An attack starting at the front. Roy Nickman from Cause Light testing the water. One of the first men to attack this morning. Well, along with him, one of the riders from the IME HealthShare team, the yellow jersey Nidem right there. Here comes another attack up the road, and it appears as though the IME team very active in this race uh, so far. Well, that was Skip Scant Spangenberg having a go there as he from, tried to launch off. From Traveler's Rest, South Carolina. Now, this is still Stephen Rux. Whatever was wrong with his bike, the wheel change hasn't been too successful. The brake is binding on the back. This is no day, Brian, for the brakes to be sticking. Well, other than to keep you from rolling backwards down the hill once they come <laughs> up there. Well, they've got down to the action very quickly this morning. We're about 45 minutes into the race now, some 20 miles covered. And it looks as though the cause light boys, Roy Nickman, is staring at the front again. Roy Nickman seems to be the man who's always up front early in the race. That appears to be his role with the team and has been that way for quite some time. Roy is what we call the nose gunner. He's up front to shoot down anything that moves. And Rooks is still having a problem with that brake, but instead of trying to fix it himself, he's gone back to the team car. And the mechanic hanging out of the side has given him a little bit of repair on the roll. These guys do everything without stopping. International rules will allow him to hold on to that automobile, but only for 100 yards or so before he would receive a penalty. Crossing one of the many rivers in this rolling terrain, the field stretching out and spreading out a little bit. It's still early in the race at this point, and perhaps a few riders just, uh, well, stopping to uh, take a nature break, as they say. Well, they're not at the front, Brian, because this is Damien McDonald from Australia riding on the inside. There's the camera, and this attack is beginning to go. Perp Edison, who rides for the Spanish Amaya, and a breakaway is forming. Nikolai Kutznesov of uh, Russia is also in that move with three men. He's the coach's son, as Alexander Kuznetsov has uh, brought a team here to the Tour du Pont for the last several years. They are here once again and sponsored by Stolichnaya in America. So a Russian vodka sold in America, sponsoring a Russian team racing in America. There he is. Well, they're going so well. The matter had a good night on him, Brian, because there's a couple of Russians up here now. Andy Bishop from Motorola. He was the early leader in the King of the Mountains. And also the L.A. Chevrolet boys, the Sheriff team are up here. That's Steve Hag and Jim Copeland. These two have also been very active throughout the race and uh, feel as though they need to be active early on, perhaps to get a move going here. And everyone seems to be almost ganging up on Word Perfect, especially the American teams. Word Perfect has said they've been surprised by the strength of the Americans, and I think that strength is in numbers because the American teams seem determined to make it as hard as possible on the Word Perfect guys. Here's Jim Copeland. We'll be racing into his adopted hometown, Winston-Salem, North Carolina, on the next to last day of this race. He's highly motivated this year and fit. So Copeland setting the pace and trying to drive away this breakaway, which is a threatening move, the first, a big threat to the overall leadership of Yellen Nidam and the Word Perfect team have been reduced once again to the big chase behind. Jim Copeland again at the front, originally from Alabama. They call him the Alabama Slammer because he just likes to get up to the front and slam on the pedals, and he only knows one way to go, flat out from the start. Here is Jose Manuel Uria of class. So Uria, the class team, are feeling at home now in the mountain. Jose Manuel Uria setting the pace, trying to pull this group away from the field. This could spell big trouble. There's only one more perfect rider up here, and that rider is Rob Mulders. So the chase is on and the break is on. Can Yellen Idam hold on to his lead today in the mountains? We'll find out after the break. 
Ahead on Sports Center, a medical decision on the career of Reggie Lewis, a career decision on the coach of the Hawks, and career recognition at the Hall of Fame. Bob Lee and Chris Fowler at 7 Eastern on Sports Center. Tour DuPont is hot, and that is not a reflection on the weather today because this attack of some three riders now, and we hear a chase group is on its way up to them. So very shortly, Brian, and look at this big bunch. We're going to have a lead group up here of some size. Well, Dick Koenig of the Work Perfect team has gone up to cover the move by the front three. He has joined Uria and Copeland now, and well, in turn, they are joined by a huge group of a couple of dozen riders coming up. One of the young American USA amateur riders, Chan McRae, it appears, driving this group towards the front. It also includes a couple of Copeland's teammates back there. I thought I saw some green and yellow Chevy LA Sheriff jerseys. Back in the main pack, however, things not going so well for the yellow jersey, Ellen Nidham, and his team, even Raul Alcala, for the first time, has come to the front of the peloton to help the chase. So Ral Alcala will try to rest as much as possible before the mountains come towards the end of the stage. There's also a nasty climb in the middle. And he's having to make his yellow jersey leader, Yellow Nidam, do the chase down here because the lead is going up. And we're on a small climb now, and it is still going up. Well, also in that group up front there, number 146 of Subaru, that's Paul Willerton. And leading at this point is uh, one of the Festina riders, teammate of Rooks, it's Carlo Finco of the Festina Lotus team, climbing along at the front of the breakaway group. That's, well, again, about a t couple of dozen riders and just about every team represented there, but no major stars. Well, this is a very interesting move indeed, and it's going to now let the others decide whether they should chase it down. The word perfect are quite concerned by this, obviously. They're trying to drag this field along. No friends at all in the main field because they sense yesterday that the word perfect boys perhaps might not be quite as perfect as they seem to give the impression over the first two days. Motorola waiting to bounce here on the near side, the British champion, alongside his protege Lance Armstrong on the far side of the field. Here once again, the lead group and Andy Bishop of Team Motorola riding extremely well up here. He has the King of the Mountain prize uh, in his mind. He has mentioned that he would very much like to take that award. Word Perfect having their problems. Eric van der Arden suffering from the heat. The Dutch and Belgian riders don't classically do well when the weather gets very, very hot, and it's pushing 90 degrees here today. Superb day, and now we're seeing some superb racing. Rob Kiefel for Cause Light has had a great tour so far. He used to be on Motorola. Now he's a rival of them. Lance Armstrong, the rider this morning who says they've got to do something today. He lies ninth overall in this race. Well, he's the best place to do something about it. He no longer trails the leader by 46 seconds, at least uh, on the GC, because out on the road, this group has gained over four and a half minutes at its largest point. One of the climbs, the early one, the first one at Thornton Gap, is going to uh, make some difference on the King of the Mountain competition because Brian Walton, who currently holds the jersey, is not there. And so instead, it is Scott Mercier, the young climber for the Saturn team, who takes it. And Bishop, with his second spot, will no doubt hold the jersey for the time being. So that breakaway has now a lead of almost four minutes over this field. And that is projecting other riders now as serious contenders for the yellow jersey today in this year's Tour du Pont. A complete swing around as the mountains come thick and fast as we head up towards the final climb of the day at the Massanutten Resort. We'll be there shortly. See you soon. This is Yellen Idam having a chat in his yellow jersey to Eric van der Arden. They're very concerned about this breakaway, which went away after around 25 miles today. It built up a leading group of 27 men. And in this front group, we've got Jim Copeland here, a man who could be a candidate for a high position on the overall classification tonight. But the chase is on, Brian, and the time gap is coming down. Also in this break, another danger man. We just saw him move to the front. That's Malcolm Elliott. Meanwhile, Yellen Idam and Team Word Perfect appear to have tried to enlist some help here. They're getting some from the Australian team. We see the young German amateur team up front. And here's Eric van der Arden, the faithful lieutenant who won four stages in this race when it was in 1989. And this is an attack going from that leading breakaway. And this will be Jose Manuel Uria, who's gone clear as we start the climb of Swift Gap. It's a good time to go. The Spanish are enjoying their day in America today because it's the mountains. Atle Volvo, he's still trapped back in the main field, along with Raul Alcla there, stalking the bunch in that blue jersey. He's hoping his teammates can do something about this gap. His Lance Armstrong doesn't look too concerned just yet. But the gap is coming down, and that may be why Brian Uria has made the attack. 
Not only that, but they're on their way to the second of two King of the Mountain finish lines at the top of the second one at Swift Run Gap. And this is a second category climb, more difficult uh, on paper. And well, you can see it appears to be more difficult on the road as well. Uria looks clear for that one and coming up behind him, the rest of the group. Things are changing here at the front, though, because Raul Alcala is now also in his element. He's setting a high tempo on the front of that field. Julia is over the top. He's taken maximum points for the King of the Mountains award, but now the chase is on. Here's the Motorola boys, too, keeping themselves right in the action as they go downhill rather quickly. Led by Lance Armstrong on the descent. He's good on the downhill part of the course, and, well, here we can see the rest of the breakaway, or at least part of it, has caught up to Uria after the climb. That breakaway of 27 is now down to just seven men. Sean Yates is stalking the field. He wants more speed from this bunch. They can sense it, Brian. And there's something like 30 seconds, I think, is the gap. The field is coming down, and I think the race is shortly going to be all together as we get to Massa Newton. And we're now on the final slopes of today's tough 100-mile stage. And an attack there now by the former champion of Switzerland who rides for the Spanish class team, that's Jorgi Muller. Well, the class have had a great day today. This is the third big attack of the day. And Muller is going, and Armstrong is going for him. Lance Armstrong, look at the incredible acceleration by the young man from Texas. And Team Motorola has really launched a big gun this time up the hill. Armstrong went by Muller like he was standing still. The finish line is in sight, and it's a roller coaster towards the finish. A few little climbs, but a couple of spots to go downhill and rest and use his power and speed. Armstrong, here comes Alcala up from behind, and this is going to be an incredible battle shaping up between two of the riders that we consider to be among the favorites in this race right from day one. And this shows just how much Raul Alcala considers Armstrong a danger. He split to this lead group it's all over the mountain here now at Massanutten. They are shattered into small pockets. That long breakaway earlier today caused so much damage. Look at these riders now looking for assistance. That's Patrick Yonker of Australia swinging off the front and looking for help too as the two top riders have got together at the front. Alcala and Armstrong and Atle Volvol is coming up as well and so too is Yogi Muller. They're the four leaders. Alcala has now caught Armstrong and well we're waiting for the next attack to come and Volvol comes up from behind with Muller, now there are four, as you said, Phil. A little bit further back, the young American Jemison and uh, the rider for Kelme in trouble. It looks as though the sprint is going to be contested among these four riders. Lance Armstrong with the blue helmet there. Raul Alcala right behind him. Vols ball in the green and orange and, well, the multicolored jersey of Subaru. Muller drifting off the back just a bit as they come around this bend. Well, this race, uh, this is a very difficult climb to judge. It goes up and it goes down before it finally kicks up to the finishing line. We've got the climbers in this year's race here now. They've proven that ability over the years as top climbers. Armstrong's the new boy now. The experience is with Atle Volzol of Norway and indeed Raul Alcala. Yogi Muller too has some many great victories under his belt. The whole field is shattered down the slopes. Up front, the race is four riders, while meanwhile back below, everyone else trying to minimize their losses. There's Hincapi of the U.S. team, along with a couple of teammates at Kvalsball on Subaru. Now Muller goes to the front once again. Armstrong just poised off his shoulder, and Kvalsball in the back. Alcala is there, too. A couple more trying to get up from behind, and including Yonkers of the Kelme team. But this looks like the race up front. They're on a little steep section that is very, very close to the finish line. And Damien McDonald is coming up there too for the Australian amateur team. That's a great ride by the young amateur rider today, just 20 years of age. He's latching on at the back, but it's the 21-year-old Armstrong from Motorola who's at the front. Alcala is there, and whoops, our camera's getting a little bit excited as well as we look now over the shoulder of our motorbike, and there is Yogi Muller now in the lead, followed by Armstrong, Alcala, and then Volswell. The rest aren't quite on yet, Brian. All the jerseys are zipped open there. Look at Armstrong and Alcala, especially with their jerseys zipped open. That tells you how hot it is here today. Jorgi Mueller up front. Armstrong, you know this is the lull before the storm. They're just waiting for an attack. Everybody dancing along on the pedals, going just about the same speed. As you said, the Australians trying to send McDonald up from behind. There's one of the L.A. Sheriffs, the green and, orange, green and yellow jerseys. There's the one kilometer to go, Banner. Six-tenths of a mile. The finish line is near. Mike Engelman, we might have considered him to be a contender. Not today. Well, Engelman has dropped off the pace, which has blown the race apart for the first time in five days. It's a matter of survival now, and they're chasing four great names in world cycling. As we go down now, the little descent before we kick up to the finishing line, and who's going to get it? 
Armstrong weaving back and forth across the road, trying to shake anybody out of his draft. Not much of a draft at this speed. These guys know that they're going to be the contenders, and they're just waiting for the first man to jump. Alcala finds himself in the unenviable front spot now. The tall Norwegian Kvalsvall is there, but coming up from behind, these guys are going to have to go pretty quick. The sprint's going to start very soon. McDonald coming up quick. Well, that's a superb piece of riding. There are two Australians there. Patrick Jonker is there as well. And the sprint, is it going to start? Alcala is looking over at Armstrong. They can almost see the finish here. Muller is kicking near the camera. Volkswagen is behind. It could be anybody's run here. They're almost in lanes side by side. Now a little bit of an advantage being gained by Armstrong as they head towards that last little kick up to the finish line. It's going to be less than three or 400 yards now. But they've got to time it right because they're so tired. They've climbed long and hard in the hot weather today. Look at the face of Armstrong. And Armstrong's going. He's taking one look at Alka and said, follow me if you can because this is the big effort now by Lance Armstrong. If he fails, he'll be fourth. If he doesn't, he's going to win. Armstrong for Motorola. They've won once with Sean Yates, the champion of Britain. Now, Lance Armstrong is going to zip himself up and salute. And is he happy today? What a superb final kick by Lance Armstrong. He gets the 10-second all-important win bonus. John Hendershot, the masseur, gives him a nice tap on the shoulder. Win number two for Motorola, but this is, without doubt, Brian Drebber, the most important win to date. An incredible victory for young Lance Armstrong on an uphill finish. What a beautiful sprint. He timed it perfectly, had the power to make it, and all the way to the line he went, even with time, as you said, to zip his jersey up for the cameras. So, I don't know what that's going to do now to the overall classification, but Armstrong has done himself a power of good with that victory today. And Raul Alcala, too. Well, by my reckoning, he must have taken over the leader's yellow jersey. And there he is, because, in fact, Yellow Nydam has stayed some way down the field and will be a long time coming in tonight. And there he is, still out on the course. No, he's just arrived, in fact, but he's lost a lot of time today. He doesn't look too unhappy about that. Unofficially, the result is Lance Armstrong, the stage winner from Atle. Volsvold takes second, Muller takes third, and in fact, in fourth place was Raul Alcala. And that was good enough to give Raul Alcala the race lead tonight. Lance Armstrong is now up into second place. The top two who are at the top of our show today, Atle Volsvold is in the third slot. What a superb day today for the United States, for Lance Armstrong and for Raul Alcala of Mexico. The stars of the tour are fighting back. This has been a great day. We'll see you tomorrow from Paul Sherwin, Brian, Dre Brian Drebber and myself, Phil Lickett. Goodbye. Well, I, it was about uh, 200 meters. And uh, it's, I, I could see that I was a little confused. I didn't know if it went right or if it went straight. And, but I could tell it was starting to level out. Luckily, I had the STI jammed in the big ring. I, I looked under my arm, and Raul was fumbling with his down tube shifter, and, and he just couldn't get in the big ring in time. Uh, and I just, once I saw that, regardless of how long, it, how far it was from the finish line, I just had to sprint all out. I turned around, and uh, I had a gap. It was sweet. Well, the race they were so, so difficult, you know. The, all my team there was chasing too much, and uh, I mean, Motorola I don't do anything, but it's a race, you know. The words of Raul Alcala, the new leader in the Tour DuPont at the Massanutten Resort yesterday. And Lance Armstrong, the new challenger in the race after his fine stage win at the hilltop finish. Let the battle commence on another day.